Hey, it's Kat Van Beatty, Peace Point Productions, and today I'm talking about narcissists and the silent treatment. You would think it's kind of just a no-brainer, like, you know, duh, they just are silent. They, they're punishing you with the silence. Well, I mean, that's what some people probably don't know about, is that the silence that narcissists use is to punish you, and they do it very subversively. They will slip it into your everyday everything, right? So they used to like everything you did. Suddenly you're saying you got this project, you won an award, you come home and they're like, you know, don't say anything at all. You, you're gonna, this is gonna click for you if you, if you have this experience. And it's just, you don't know what's going on. You start becoming a little bit discombobulated because it happens so often. You're just like, well, I'm, I'm not getting any human response. I, and you don't realize that what is happening is you aren't having the resiliency or reciprocity basically between two humans, resiliency, <laughs> that too, but um, the reciprocity that most human beings have and it starts to shut you down and it's, you know, people can add all sorts of malicious intentions like, oh, they do it because of this, that, and the other, but you know, I've used silent treatment. I'm not a narcissist. I mean, it's just something I didn't know was a form of punishment. My, you know, somebody in my family used it and they may have been, you know, had a lot of those traits. So that's what I learned from them and I you know it just it didn't strike me as particularly a bad thing until it happened to me uh, <laughs> and karma was a bitch basically so in a relationship I just had a lot of silent treatment when I was happy a lot of silent treatment when I was happy mostly <laughs> Uh, when I was like excited about something so it's like I started to be like a kid again just kind of like dumbed down like oh I can't be happy I don't they're not gonna we don't get to share this so I kind of kept it down you know and you kind of get this tough face about you and I seemed so stoic people would call me but I was falling apart on the inside I, I mean it wasn't long before I had a near-death experience and <laughs> I had to leave everything that I loved behind so you know, this is more emphatic than I usually make in my videos, but I just, something changed in me today. I'm on a spiritual journey as well, as a nihilist. Um, moving energy in the world, exploring energy in the cosmos, and uh, I am also doing a, I have a twin flame, if anybody knows about that, and so learning a lot about twin flames is really fun, but <laughs> my twin flame is not a narcissist, <laughs> but uh, I'm such a bitch. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is Peace Point Productions. We're helping to learn about all of this together, and uh, I don't know if this is going to go up or not, but uh, silent treatment, it's just, it kind of sucks, because you're like, you need them, you start like poking them around. I mean, sometimes I, I became like, kind of like, you know, like, I would try to get something out of them, and that becomes abusive, right? So then you become abusive in return, trying to get a response out of them. It's just, it becomes a cycle. I don't think I've heard anybody talk about that aspect of it. It's flown from the heart, like Deanne Tord says, I flow from the heart. I <laughs> reach, bitch. <laughs> yeah, anyways, um, it's just, you know, sign the treatment. And uh, it's just, it's, it's a tactic. It's, it's a war tactic. To war against your mind, war against your feelings of intimacy, and war against your love, and something that they don't have, which is love. They don't have love. They don't have love for themselves, and they wish they did, so they're doing what cheap people do. They just kind of try to tear you down instead of figuring out how to help themselves have love. They don't understand that they could give themselves love. And, they could heal and all this stuff. It just, it's not even there. And so that's the sad thing about narcissism is that they're in denial. It's, they're unaware of this behavior. And so you really have to pity them, but don't pity them. <laughs> don't get sucked into the, I'll talk about narcissism pity. And that's, you know, that's definitely something that needs to be addressed uh, if it's needed here. But like, if you don't know about it, it's just, they use pity play to get you to, you know, get back with them or, and then, you know, silent treatment, pity play together, you know, all these, these tricks in there. So they have all these tricks in their book. And you're not even, you don't play games, right? So you're like, I, I don't understand what's going on. Like, you're just really confused because you just don't play games, right? And they don't understand that. So they keep playing these games thinking they're like duking it out with you. And you, you just don't play games. So you're just confused. That's, the, that's what it is. Um, and the silent treatment is more confusing because you never know when it's going to happen. They, don't, they have a, a strategy that's beyond your map comprehension. You don't even try to figure it out. I would just say you Rubik's Cube. <laughs>
can you figure out a Rubik's Cube? Me neither. Uh, don't try. It's gonna drive you nuts. Unless you want to spend the rest of your life doing that, if that's your thesis paper, you know, I'm gonna work on the Rubik's Cube for my life and get paid grandly for it. You're not getting paid grandly to be with a narcissist. They're probably taking money, they're probably taking resources, they're taking time, energy, health, power, strength. Anyways, that's all I have to say today. I hope this goes over well with you guys, and um, namaste, peace punks. Anybody can be a peace punk, you just have to be peaceful.